Oh god, that is terrifying. <laughs> fun. Wish yours is nice looking. I just look like some horrific monster made out of sunflowers. Well. <laughs> <laughs> It's like mystery. What what is it that I'm holding? Dun, 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 dun. Look yeah. how professional are we? Sadly, this is not March. This is just for us. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted March. <laughs> so we got ourselves our own cups. <laughs> yes. No more crappy paper cups for us. We've moved up in the world. <laughs> oh no, that's very difficult to manage. I'll just put it in front of my face. Oh, Alaska, you're looking so plain and simple today, a bit washed out. Well, I needed to get my makeup done in under four hours, so this is what I ended up with. <laughs> Honestly, at some point, I'm probably going to go and get other things made just because I want them. Next time you see me, I'm going to be wearing the t-shirt, there's going to be a cat. God, we've got a merch plan coming together now, clearly. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sister Alaska Lots. And I'm Sister Babushka. And this... Is utter nonsense. The show where we pour a cup of piping hot tea. And we utter whatever nonsense pops into our heads. And if you haven't learned by now, this is quite a casual laid back chat amongst friends. And we upload a new episode once a month, every month on the first of the month. So make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of new episodes when they come out. ding a ling a ling Tell them it's a podcast. It's a podcast. Oh, my face just disappeared. It's <laughs> stop it. It's a podcast. Remember to download the podcast wherever you get good podcasts from, and you can listen on the go. Oh, that's such a pro. <laughs> <laughs> All the sister shows are amazing. Well, oh, two of them. <laughs> yeah. What more do you want? <laughs> more shows all the time. We want none TV. I'm going to have to pay my living expenses before I can do that. <laughs> I have to like keep up with my cat's lifestyles. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who's watching, you may have noticed that there is a bit of a theme that's happening today. This is not actually related to what today's episode is about. However, in light of current events that are happening we felt it was important to visibly take a stand and show our support to people in Ukraine. As you'll see, I think we've both adopted um, very similar colours today uh, in honour of the Ukrainian flag. And also there might be a little bit of a, a theme both with the other parts of our makeup, whether that is these glorious sunflowers that Alaska is sporting or the seeds uh, from the well-known Babushka curse um, that has been going about online as well. And of course, I've bedazzled myself with peace symbols. Sister Alaska does not believe in war. So for any of our watchers or listeners who are based in Ukraine or in the surrounding countries, we do hope you're safe and that you, uh, you your loved ones are safe as well. Our hearts go out to the Ukrainian people and anyone who's affected by conflicts around the world. Um, if you are looking for ways to help, we will leave a couple of links in the description for how you can donate to humanitarian causes, etc. The anticipation! <laughs> so, for those watching and have been avid listeners of Utter Nonsense for a while now, you might have guessed that me and Alaska are part of the Alphabet Mafia. Da, da, da. And today we're going to be breaking open one of the letters of the LGBTQIA+. And what better way to start going through the alphabet family than with the letter A! 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 The episode of Sesame Street. <laughs> there are a lot of A's. I just had to say them all individually. That's what it was. <laughs> You get lots of different versions of the acronym. And I, I don't think we even have like an agreed 
standards anymore. Like different people do it in different ways. And some of those letters get, I think, talked about more than others. But we felt it was important to reflect on some of the other letters that are in that acronym and, you know, just help people with understanding who they are, what they're about. I think I, I am definitely one of those people that uses a shorter version of the acronym. So I think I go with LGBTQ+. And so already you can see that I'm missing out I, I'm missing out A, and I'm probably missing out some other letters depending on which version people are using. So yeah, I think it's, it's definitely worth having time to shine a light on other parts of the LGBTQIA plus family that don't get much representation or recognition. So I suppose we should start by discovering what the A actually stands for, because unlike some of the other letters, it stands for more than one thing. So I think the A's that we have listed that we were going to talk about today are for ace or asexual, able or aromantic, and also agender. The thing that is important is also to say what the A does not stand for. Sadly, I'm sorry to our allies, it does not stand for allies. We love you. We do. Allies are really important to our community and, you know, there are people who genuinely suffer from bigots and things because of their support of the community. And we greatly appreciate that. However, you are not LGBTQIA plus yourself, but you are very much our friends. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> you don't have a letter, but you do have our love and affection for supporting us and being there with us through our struggles. I think for a long time, um, it was the only thing that I knew for A's. People just said A's for ally. I don't know if the conversation has shifted over time or if it's just my understanding has improved over time. I was still learning. I still am learning now. Life is, we'll be learning for the rest of our days. <laughs> However short they may be. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone heard that. Babushka has threatened my life. <laughs> <laughs> well... You, you just watch out because if I start running across this sunflower field... Oh, I think I can see way up back there. <laughs> it's too heavy to run with this on. These boobs I mean, are weighing me down. Given that you're at sunset and I'm still middle of the day, you've got quite a long way to run. <laughs> That's just radioactive pollution in the air in Chernobyl today. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? They're giving out, like, anti-radiation tablets and things to people. <laughs> Mr Putin... No, no, no. You'll be getting put in the naughty step. Oh. <laughs> You'll be put in the naughty corner <laughs> <laughs> to think about what you did. <laughs> We're very lucky to live in a country where we can say these things, you know. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely, I'm definitely feeling over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> we can talk about political leaders without necessarily fearing for my life. Clearly, Alaska is not a threat yet. Yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we talked about what A does not stand for, but maybe we should explore a little more about what those terms mean for the ones that it does stand for. Which one would you like to begin with, Alaska? Oh, let's start with the one that we've got first on the list, which is ACE. Da -da -da -da. Let's start then with just a very basic definition of asexual, just the, the, at the most basic level. It's just someone who doesn't experience sexual desire, but um, they may experience romantic desire, um, which is a, a separate thing entirely. And at its core, that's what it is. But as you say, there are myths and preconceptions around what that means as well. There's not one specific way for people to be asexual, and which leads to the fact that within asexuality, there are also actual sort of broken down terms as well to categorize or label people um, according to different levels of asexuality. Yeah, because essentially it's not it's not actually just one thing. It is an umbrella term. So there are different nuances that can exist within that. So someone may just identify as as ace, but they may also identify as one of the things that sit under that umbrella. I am here in the umbrella <laughs> um, as a uh, demisexual. Um, so I fit under the asexual sort of category umbrella and then within that my little subsection demisexual are basically people who don't experience sexual attraction unless there's that really strong emotional bond 
not necessarily romantic, but there is that connection with someone on quite a deep level. Um, and I think when when I've talked about this, I've definitely had those misconceptions of, a, oh yeah, I like to know someone too. And I like to, you know, be involved with my partner before we have sex at times. I'm like, that's not the same. <laughs> it's always a tricky one to fully explain how that deep connection works, because I think it is very much a personal thing. And so trying to describe how that connection works to people before there's any attraction is something. And I, I think the way I've had to settle it on with describing it to friends and family is a, well, are you able to have a one night stand with people, you know, if you don't know them in that? And some of them have been like, oh yeah, I can get that, or I can do this. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. I can't find random person and sleep with them. And so I think that's been the key way that I've had to define demisexual to people. It's also quite closely related to grey sexual as well, isn't it? Which is just a, another slightly different flavour for people who have some sexual desire, but in a limited in different ways. Again, it's the common state is no sexual attraction um, or very little interest in any sort of sexual activity, which is really what defines the ace umbrella, I feel. The flags for different sexualities and genders can tell you quite a lot about who's encapsulated in that term as well because diff- usually the different colors have different meanings that kind of give you more of that nuance so the asexual flag has four colors in it um, it has black gray white and purple and the flag was apparently created in 2010 um, apparently this is the same time the pan flag was created too just as a wee side note That feels quite late in the game. And it was designed to um, represent a variety of ace identities, including people like grey sexuals, which is the fluid area between sexuals and asexuals. And it also includes demisexuals as well. Um, So people who, as we said, don't experience sexual attraction unless they have that connection with their partners. So apparently the black stripe represents the asexuality. The grey represents the grey sexuals and demisexuals. The white is to represent allies. So see, you get to be in the flag too. <laughs> and the purple stripe represents community. That is, that is very lovely, actually. Um, and yay, representation in the flag. <laughs> <laughs> like there is also a variation for the demisexual flag, but it does still use the same colours. So it's quite funny um, that within the subsect, you will also have a uh, common flag that is used to define it as well. It's a shame that we don't get more representation for um, ACEs, I think, just generally in, in media. I've definitely found it difficult to find good representation, or even just any representation. However, there is one that I actually do know off the top of my head that it's not confirmed, but it is thought that Emily Bronte was asexual. Mm. Yeah, she was very reclusive and uh, no one knows of any romantic partnerships at all throughout her life. Um, so they think that she may be somewhere on that scale. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Either that or it's possible that she was aromantic, which we'll, we'll come to a wee bit later, which is another part of the A's in the LGBTQIA+. That's so cool. I, ne- I never would have guessed that about Emily Bronte. I'm Googling to see if there's anyone else interesting. Oh, apparently one other suggestion is Isaac Newton. Oh. Well, that's interesting. So Newton never married and was not known to have any romantic partnerships. (laughs) And apparently he clearly hated women and may well have died a virgin and was terrified of sex. (laughs) I mean, I don't think that is generally part of the definition. (laughs) (laughs) I think as we'll touch on, there's maybe some (laughs) misconceptions there. (laughs) There's one problematic person that is theorised as being asexual, and that's the sort of American author uh, H.P. Lovecraft. Um, Because although he married, um, if you've read his letters and how he talks about his wife, um, you know, he doesn't refer to her by name. It's generally S.G., um, and there was a distinct lack of any sexuality in any of his works. Obviously, it's not confirmed, um, but there is that um, sort of 
feeling that he might also have been on the asexual spectrum. Very interesting. I had no idea. Google has informed me there is there's another person who may be quite surprising, um, who's current and also slightly controversial. Well, I've already thrown in a racist, so... <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. Really? Yeah. Again, I had no idea. It's, it's not is not what Caitlyn Jenner is generally known for, mm. but um, apparently is, is now identifying as asexual. You're going to laugh at this one. SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, I think I have heard things about this because there was a big fuss during the pandemic. The, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants um, address the sexualities of the show's characters. And they said, I consider them to be almost asexual. <laughs> Nickelodeon has actually announced since that interview that yes, SpongeBob is a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. That feels <laughs> very appropriate actually for SpongeBob because from what I remember of the show, again, it's very sexless focused and it's very much focused on SpongeBob just doing what he enjoys. And there is no hint of relations in any way, while other characters might have that. Mm. It's, it's done in an age-appropriate way, where <laughs> SpongeBob just ain't about that for anyone. <laughs> Someone else, uh, Nikola Tesla. Mm. Apparently, Tesla had stated that he had never touched a woman during his life, and further explained that he had an aversion to sexual intimacy. So therefore, it is speculated that he was asexual or aromantic or both. Mm, interesting. There are some common misconceptions that you hear around asexuality um, bandied about by people that maybe haven't taken the time to fully understand or get to even know people that identify as ace. And I think some of those come across as people that are ace have an anti-sex attitude. So not only does the person not experience sexual attraction to people but the fact that they don't want that for anyone which I think is quite a quite an overreaction and um, I think people that identify as ace don't care what you're getting up to in the bedroom because it doesn't affect them so you know that common myth of oh they're just anti-sex is not true they're only anti-sex about themselves <laughs> so I think that's something that you generally hear bandied about quite a lot as well as the classic they just haven't found the right person yet oh <laughs> yeah it's the same misconception that comes up for other members of the queer community as well as you know oh you can't be a lesbian you just haven't met the right man yet or maybe they're just a lesbian <laughs> also have you met men <laughs> god straight cis men no, we mentioned aromantic a few times. Maybe we should we should talk about what that means. <laughs> as, as you said, we've mentioned aromantic quite a few times. So, Alaska, tell us, what is our next A? Next A <laughs> is aromantic, <laughs> as you just said. I really fucked that up. <laughs> uh, so, aromantic uh, is a person who doesn't experience romantic longing but they could experience sexual desire. So the two things, the sexual desire and the romantic longing are different things. So you could be both asexual and aromantic, but you could be just one or the other. The aromantic flag is made up of five horizontal stripes. So it's got, the starting from top to bottom, it is a dark green stripe, followed by a light green stripe, followed by a white stripe, then a gray one, and finally a black one at the bottom. The dark green actually symbolizes aromanticism. Meanwhile, the light green together with the dark one represents the aromantic spectrum. The white line stands for platonic and aesthetic attractions. The gray and the black represent the sexuality spectrum. Interesting. There is different ways to identify as aromantic, which is again why you have those different variations of colour, because just like with asexuality and anything else in life, there is a spectrum to how people will identify to that. I'm trying to find out if there's any like famous aromantic 
people. So obviously we touched on a couple of historical figures where there's speculation that could have been asexual or aromantic or both. Um, but if you thought trying to find like famous asexual people was hard, finding famous aromantic people is even harder. That's just how little representation there is out there in the world. <laughs> so I have found there is a model called, uh, I'm going to say this name wrong, so apologies, Yasmin Benowitz, and describes herself as a black, asexual, aromantic woman. So she, she uses both of those different labels. Is that she doesn't need a partner to complete her. She's complete just the way she is. I love that. Oh, Aww. that's very nice. Also, good for her. That's how people should be, strong in yourself. She apparently uses her platform to fight against asexuality stigma and dispel myths and help empower the ace community. Nice. I've never heard of her before, but I'm already a fan. <laughs> <laughs> like I mentioned earlier for asexual, again, a romantic also really difficult to find within media um so i don't think we even have a spongebob figure like we do for asexuality am barry who wrote peter pan oh they think he may have been aromantic and asexual so potentially both so he was married but he was the least interested in sex he was a darling man he was innocent which is why he could write Peter Pan. Barry and his wife never consummated their relationship and they later divorced. So again, it's so difficult to know with historical figures. I mean, it is just, because these kind of things don't get written into history as, as we talked about in a, a fairly recent episode here. <laughs> so it's difficult really trying to uncover those queer stories. And of course, language has changed over the years as well. So knowing how they would identify themselves today is, is even more difficult. And I think... It is becoming a bit more commonplace for representation, at least in media as well, because there are one or two sort of new pieces of media that have come out in the last couple of years that do feature aromantic people. So even if we don't have historical people to look back in, and we know there will have been tons of aromantic people at some point in history, but as you say, Alaska, they just don't get written into the books. But it is nice to see that it is becoming slightly more visible and known about do have some more misconceptions to be addressed yes 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 let's bust those myths <laughs> much like people would assume with asexuals being anti-sex people sometimes band about that aromantics are anti-romance and again that's not the case it's just not for them that's not their preference and so they're not anti-romance overall it is just not romance for themselves. We've also got that aromantics can be quite cold or heartless because they don't actually feel romance and so they must be, you know, dead inside or something like that. Horrible Such misconception. A, yeah, that's, that's just a horrible thing to portray anyone as. No, people can be friendly and warm. They can be very loving and form deep relations with people. It's just romance isn't for them. You know, there, there's more than one type of love that people can have you know you can have love for your friends it doesn't have to mean that just because somebody isn't romantic it, it doesn't mean that they're cold or robotic as some people will sometimes describe it as the other other misconception which is a kind of bundle one again of the oh they can be fixed they haven't found the right person yeah i think one of the biggest misconceptions that i've come across with both asexual and aromantic is people thinking that they don't have relationships you know thinking that asexual people don't have sex just because they're asexual doesn't mean <laughs> and being aromantic doesn't mean that people don't have relationships in different ways so you know it's and it's not for anyone to please that either it's, it's up to the individual to, to do what feels right for them the idea that sometimes society says that romance and sexual intimacy have to be linked in all the time and um, I think maybe that is why people feel uncomfortable when you describe characters as asexual or aromantic because it goes against what society has force-fed everyone. Look at me knocking everything over as I move my hands a bit but yeah. It's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the fact that society has pushed this linkage between uh, sex and relationships and romance all have to be the same thing you can't possibly define them as separate things um 
when yeah you then have aces avomantics that really challenge this idea which probably upsets the patriarchy and whatnot i think it's time that we discuss the agender elephant in the room agender a a agender agent agender a a agender everyone needs to have an elephant in the room my lord there's no space for all these elephants anymore so i suppose in a way the asexual and aromantic are there's a slight link there in that it's about having relationships with other people in different ways whereas your agender people it's not about that at all it's about who you are who you are on the inside squishy sack of organs for a agender that is defined as somebody not having a gender so sometimes it will be described as a lack of gender Others will say gender neutral, um, but we can also go with sort of genderless, gender free, gender blank. And it's all basically about not identifying as masculine or as feminine, but basically no gender, blank slate. Yeah, so they, they come under the non-binary umbrella, essentially, because there are different ways of, of being non-binary. So it's part of that. And of course, non-binary itself comes under the trans umbrella, many umbrellas down definitely good for whenever there's rain <laughs> people who who identify as agender may choose to also identify as things like trans and non-binary or they may not so people you know use whatever labels feel comfortable for them um but it's just to help people's understanding of where it sits in the world this one is very much about how one identifies oneself. Looking on Google, I've discovered something new. Um, so this is a slight sidetrack. I've never come across the term gender void before, but apparently that's a thing, which is quite similar to being agender. But gender void is when people feel there's an empty place where they feel their gender would or should be, whereas agender people don't feel that there's anything missing. <laughs> You know, funnily enough, gender void was there in one of the things I was just scrolling past. And I was like, huh. Are there any famous people who are agender? See, I feel this might be another one that's quite difficult to track down. I think the best we can probably find is uh, people who are non-binary. Jinx Monsoon. Oh, I love Jinx. I can't believe oh. I didn't think of that one first off my head. So Jinx, obviously of, of RuPaul's Drag Race fame, um, in a post about transphobia and the drag scene, said, I myself do not identify as cisgendered. I am genderless. Oh, Jinx, we love you. Do love Jinx. That's probably the only person in the list that I would recognise as terrible. <laughs> obviously, there will have been a gender people throughout history that, again, we won't be able to know. And it's where it's maybe sometimes easier for historians to speculate on people's sexuality and um, because of you can examine their relations or lack of relations it can sometimes be a lot harder to guess or best estimate what somebody's gender identity would have been especially if there were societal pressures at the time and of course again a lot of these terms are recent so people didn't necessarily have the same language in order to describe the experiences they were having so i think the term agender um only came about in like the year 2000 or something. I'm sure there'll be other people in throughout history who, had they had the knowledge and the language, would have identified as a gender, but just that wasn't a thing at the time. A lot of the things you hear nowadays um, from critics, shall we say, of the LGBTQIA plus community is, oh, it's all just newfangled and you're all just making it up and it will disappear in a couple of years. And it's, you know, that frustrating part of, no, we're giving words to things that have been around for much longer, um, but that society has sort of sidelined throughout. So not given the space for us to have these words. And it's something that it, people who are cisgender, I don't think they can ever begin to understand just what it's like to not be cisgender. I definitely think it's it's one of those interesting conversations to have with people that are always identified as cisgender about how, yeah, that journey that you go on as somebody that identifies as anything other than cisgender, you know, it can take years to fully just 
define that for yourself, let alone for other people. And so that is where some of that rebuke about, oh, you're doing it for attention or it's a political thing or all those other <laughs> terrible things they will say about it because they don't understand it because they've not had to go through that experience of finding yourself and not having that piece that doesn't fit right. So for people who, who don't understand and have never lived that experience, I like to try and explain it through um, what hand you use. So, you know, asking someone, are you left-handed or are you right-handed? And um, most of the time the answer you will get is right-handed. And then you ask, well, why? Mm. You, you don't know, you were just, you just are. And it's something that we take for granted now that people can also be left-handed. And those two are fairly well known. Um, for a long time, being left-handed was seen as evil and you weren't allowed. And people were forced to be right-handed and they were mistreated. They were you know, caned at school and forced to write with the right hand. And so it's just, it, I think it's easier for people to relate to that. It's just been an innate thing that you are. And then you say, okay, so we know about left and right-handed, but you also know that there are other things that it's not just left or just right. You've heard of ambidextrous people, far fewer of them than there are left-handed people and right-handed people. But you know that there are ambidextrous people who are equally good with both hands. And there are other shades of that. So you get people who are mixed handed. They're not equally good with both hands, but they're also not just left or just right handed. There's there's somewhere else in the ether. That is what gender is. It's just another thing that you just are. And I think that's the only way that cis people can kind of get how innate it is mm. um, and how you know, there are more complexities there because they understand being left and right-handed. Uh, that, that is a really interesting analogy, actually. And yeah, it's definitely one I'll try out next time I've got one of those questions from somebody that identifies as sort of cisgendered. So thank you for sharing that, Alaska. You're welcome. <laughs> I find it a useful one because I am mixed-handed, so I'm not left or right-handed. I'm just weird in every way. <laughs> you, just, you just are what gender you are. And it's not for anyone else to question. You could try and force someone to live in that gender, but they'll never be it. I mean, it shouldn't even matter what somebody else's gender is. You know, there's only, there's, there's no reason for you to need to have that person's gender or define what that person's gender is for them. And of course, the way someone presents themselves, like what clothing they wear, whether they wear makeup or not, it's got nothing to do with their gender either. Would you like to know the agender flag? Yes. Tell us about the flag. The flag, the flag. So this one was created in 2014. So it's another recent flag as well. The flag is made up of seven horizontal stripes. So it begins with a black stripe at the top, followed by a gray, then a white, then a light green stripe. And then it continues with another white, gray and black stripe. And the, the black and the white stripes represent the absence of gender. The gray represents the semi-genderlessness. Meanwhile, the central green stripe represents non-binary genders. Love it. Yeah, but I think, I think it is that case of because a gender can fall under sort of non-binary under the trans, all those umbrellas. And so again, you see this sort of representation of different words or different identities sometimes within each other's flags I think it's quite a common thing mm -hmm. all those umbrellas <laughs> so many just, just imagine having to decorate your room with every single pride flag for a letter that you've claimed it'd be pretty glorious actually I could create a really fabulous fabric tent in my room with all the flags draping down <laughs> so everyone's just going to go to Alaska's for tea in the tent yeah <laughs> tea in the tent we should do that <gasps> That sounds like a great event. I would go to that. <laughs> well, you know, once this pandemic's over and people can start socialising again, why not? People are going to come expecting tea in the tent and we're just going to be sitting there dishing the dirt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> One other term that we've not talked about that is not often talked about, but also begins with A, so I feel it still belongs in the A's of the LGBTQIA+, is abrosexual which is uh, a much newer term as well. So that's not a term I've actually heard before, Alaska. So what is abrosexual then? 
So it's one I've only come across really recently, but uh, from what I've learned, it's someone who has different levels of sexual or romantic attractions throughout their life. So it's not always at the same place. It, it varies throughout their life. Well, so now that's interesting because I've heard, like I've heard of the fact that people can change over time, but I didn't realize it was an actual term to encapsulate that. Like I've, I've heard that, you know, people can be identifying as straight and then at some point in their life, they'll realize actually I'm, I identify as gay now, I identify as bi, or, you know, they will change that sexual preference. And that's not something I realized had an actual term. Yeah, um, it has a flag as well, apparently. The flag was oh. created in 2015. Uh, so again, fairly recent. It looks like it's got a mix of like different shades of green, then there's white in the middle, and then different shades of pink. The creator and the meaning of this flag are unknown. Oh. Mystery flag. It's thought to have originated on deviant art in 2013 and then gains traction on Tumblr in 2016 oh tumblr i've googled it and one of the images that has come up is the picture of you know the pokemon abra oh yeah (laughs) colored in with the colors of the flag of the green the white and the the pinks uh, because obviously abro sexual abra sexual i like it (laughs) (laughs) yeah i just thought they deserved to be mentioned too oh that's great well there you go like there are now four a's that we've talked about Um, within our LGBTQIA plus family. I felt you've definitely helped me learn something now. Yay! (laughs) My job is done here. (laughs) Well, hopefully, I mean, that's been an interesting episode for people. I know there will be folk watching this who are familiar with all the terminology and that's grand, but I know hopefully it's been, you know, you've learned a wee thing here and there, even if it's just the analogy to whether you're left or (laughs) right-handed. (laughs) <laughs> or, you know, famous people who identify as, as one or more of these terms or may have done. It's definitely been nice to spend an episode giving a sort of shout out and a mention to a part of the alphabet family that maybe gets overlooked quite a bit by not just modern society, but again, even people within the LGBTQIA plus community mm-hmm. um, where, you know, a lot of the focus comes on the first four letters, um, or even maybe m- the main three of L, G, and T, because we know bi erasure is a thing. Um, but yeah. it's nice to spend that time giving a shout out and a dis- you know helping people understand some of the other parts of our queer family. Yeah, and knowing a bit more about what they are and what they're not as well. Yes. We can Fuck off, use- allies. <laughs> no. <laughs> You got a colour in one of the flags. <laughs> <laughs> what more do they need? You are also allowed to live your truth. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> what shall we talk about next? I mean, there are so many things. It's very difficult to decide, you know. Mm. I mean, I could just rant about stuff for ages. <laughs> All tea and shade. <laughs> when we get together, we definitely lose track of time when we start chatting about everything. Since the next episode is going to be coming out in May, uh, May also has Ida Hobbit, which is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia. So we wanted to touch on that as well as the general aspect of gatekeeping within the queer community. I think that'll be a really interesting one as well. If you like this video, then please remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all our nonsense as it comes out. So ring that bell. I think after all that, after all the nonsense, as well as the serious stuff, I think we did the thing. We did the thing? We did the thing. 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 I keep fading into the background, but we did the thing. You don't have to be seen in order to do the thing. Invisible thing doing. (laughs) Sounds dirtier every time. Oh, yeah.